Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I have been known to do some daft things and starting to work on a bonsai that might involve some intricate wiring at three o'clock in the afternoon is not the best of ideas because I'm going to run out of daylight and I don't have suitable lights in here to carry on. But I wanted to make a start. Um, what's really sort of sparked this off is um, I've done quite a bit of work this week on the, um, on the Orchid channel, um, a variety of videos and that's what that channel's all about, and nothing really on the bonsai channel. I haven't done anything about trees for a while. The last bonsai video was dragging a, something out of a box, you know, so this is my birthday tree, Japanese white pine, and we've got some major decisions to make, which I think I've made. I've had a look round before I started filming. Um, and <clears throat> it's wine o'clock, three o'clock. I probably won't get to drink much of this kind of thing. And it's too late in the day for coffee, that's for sure. Right, decision. This is going to be the front, this side, because this is the best. You've got to have a graft, you know, if you've, if you've got a grafted tree, you've got to make the best of the graft, basically. And the way I'm going to make the best of the graft is to cover it up with that branch. Now that's only a little branch at the moment. We'll work on that. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of video watching and listening mainly to Ryan and a couple of others. But combine lots of people's ideas and concepts, time of year, all that sort of stuff. Combine them all together and then what I do, same as I do on the Orchid channel, is I average. Okay, so if 10 people say this is the way to do it and one person says something different, the chances are the 10 are right. But you've got to go careful with that because that one could be the revolutionary view that becomes the way forward. So don't just reject something because it's odd. Um, anyway, so having decided that's the front, when I repot this, I'm going to pull it forward a bit and make it a little bit more upright because at the moment the whole tree goes away from us. Um, you know, it's like we don't want to we don't want to be with you. We want to be over there somewhere. It's not. It's the wrong concept for the tree. Um, <clears throat> the large part that's dead straight at the top. Um, the guy I bought it from said that's been left there to thicken everything up with the intention that it would eventually come off. And I was thinking I might be able to incorporate that into the design of the tree, but it would take some serious bending. Uh, I'm not sure I've got that sort of skill. So I'm gonna run with the original concept and say that this bit out here is gonna go. So the only reason for keeping it is to thicken up the rest of the tree. Next thing, branches. Well, we've got a lot of choice. But as with pines, you often get a set of branches, sometimes up as many as five, all coming out of the same place. And if you leave them all, you will get a knuckle. Even if you take them off later, you'll still end up with that knuckle and you'll have to sort of take old chunks out of the tree to, to regain your shape. So you want to try and avoid that. <clears throat> now, a lot of the way that's avoided, looking at other trees, is that when you get a set of branches all coming out the same way, let's say you've got a pair coming out like that alongside each other, yeah? Well, if the tree goes like that, then one of them is up here as a branch and one of them is down here as a branch, as opposed to a pair of handlebars. And that's done by the, moving the trunk rather than the branches to help get that shape. So first off, if this top bit's coming off, where is our apex going to be? We've got to look at the shape. And we've got quite a nice piece of movement on this trunk. Not exaggerated, I don't like bends that are too exaggerated. Until it gets to here, and then it goes off in an opposite direction, dead straight. So the logical apex is this piece here. Why is that logical? Well, because first of all, when I take this huge chunk off, boy, am I going to have a chunk drop. Chunk drop? Trunk chop. That's before I've drunk it. God knows what it would be like later. Yeah, so to try and hide where that has been chopped off, it pays to have a pretty substantial branch coming out from that point, pointing towards you. 
so that the chop is behind that branch and this is that branch yeah coming around here so that is the branch that is where the chop will be yeah so this will become the new apex and as an apex it's got choices of branches to continue and as an apex it will allow me to bring the curve back round so we can go round like this and then we can come back on ourselves and be pointing towards us so we bring our apex pointing back towards us rather than running away for the hills run for the hills who did that um, right so that's the concept so messing about with this top bit you might say well you're going to cut that off so i wouldn't worry about that but i don't know when i'm going to cut it off it could be in two or three years time you see what I mean? It's, it's not a now thing. But what is a now thing is to take the strength out of this lot so that this lot grows better this coming spring. All of these branches down here, I believe, have been worked on because they all look around the same needle size and they've obviously had some pinching done in the past, I would suggest. So this bottom part of the tree is quite well balanced but what is well out of balance is this bit of the tree and it is well out of balance so what we've got to do really is take the strength out of the top of this tree without removing it so we're going to head for the central point where the most needle mass is and take them out so all these big strong central points we take them out now that's going to let a lot more light into the tree for a start, which is good. But the main reason for taking that out is to reduce the strength of the top of the tree. And by doing that, we should push that energy back down in the tree. You've also got the concept that by taking the tips out, what else are you doing? This is important. You're taking the auction, auxins away from the apex and those suppress what's going on lower down. By taking them out, what's lower down gets a go. <laughs> it gets a turn. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it is, it is quite important. Um, I mean, I'm not going mad, I'm not taking the whole tree to pieces here. I'm just looking for those central points, you know, where there are branches going out either side and there's a central point which is a very tight cluster and we take that out and we do it across the whole of the top of this tree and only the top, where's that center point, there he is it's just a matter of, you know, most of the time this is just three where there's three, take the center one out leaving the two, which are the weaker ones comparatively. And in some cases I'm taking more than that off. But I need to be able to get the light down into the lower part of the tree. To do that we remove a bit of the top. That's really part of the lower part of the tree there, but that is a massive amount of needle needles. Take it back to the one below room to breathe here. Right, we still need more off here. Still got far too much density. To so say by doing this, um, we push the energy back into the tree and in doing that, what we also do is take those auxins out and we let daylight through. Um, now I'm looking for dense parts, bits that are gonna block the daylight. So that's over and above what I've already done. So it'll still be, take the center point out if that's what it needs doing, but I'm looking for places that are blocking sun. Huge big dense piece like this look. So I'm gonna have to get rid of a lot of it. So we do that. Over here, very, very dense piece here, and I've already taken a piece off of there, so I now need to take some more off. Let's, you know, let there be light and all that. It's important that, you know, that the light gets through this sun canopy to these lower branches 
and it's also important for the strength of the plant to actually push downwards into that area. So I've still got this dense piece here. And again here. You can see gradually this is getting thinner. I'm doing it a bit at a time because I don't want to take huge chunks off. I want to do it a bit at a time so that I can sort of see what I'm doing. I'm mainly going back to side shoots. But I'm also taking big bits off with, um, with large needles just to get that light through. And once we let the daylight through, the lower part of the tree will get going a bit better. It's not that it isn't going very well at the moment, because it is. You know, the tree is very well balanced down below, but it needs more light and more strength pushing into it. Dense bit there, and that bit there in the middle, we're not going to want that. So said, how much I take off of this top bit doesn't matter that much because the whole piece will come off eventually. But I do want to let the light through. And as I said, I started on the very tip and now I'm just gradually moving down to the point where there's an awful lot more light getting through. And it is a relatively slow process because, I, as I said, I don't want to take too much off. Um, but we're getting there. Right, so that, that's number one, and anywhere where I see huge long, long needles, they can come off as well. Although there, aren't, there isn't too much of that going on, quite honestly. Um, there is some, not a lot. There's some old, old needles in places as well. So, that will do for top pruning. I'm just um, still looking for these uh, sets of old needles because um, they can just come off. You just snip them off near the base. Um, some people yank them off. Um, we can. But um, at the base of a set of five needles, which is what this has got, is a little embryo bud. And if you tear the needles off, you could well damage that little bud. Whereas if you just cut them off, they will turn brown and fall off on their own without any tearing and you leave that little bud intact. And who knows, it might grow, it might not. Right, now down below here, we're not going to go mad simply because we should now get a redistribution of energy in the spring where an awful lot of growth is going to take place down here. Well, that's the theory anyway. <laughs> uh, right, so in our plan, this is going to be our apex. Um, all of this will come off. These will be side branches. And down here, we will have this branch will disguise the scar by being the first branch. Yeah? Um, uh, am I going to try and wire at this time of day? I'll put a little bit on.
So anyway, I mean, what I will probably do now when I come back to this is um, get some much finer wire that I'll be able to work with these fine branches because I've already broken one off by using wire that's just too thick. Um, so we want to cut that out for a start and get some much thinner wire that I can work with and then just carry on doing a pair of branches at a time, get them roughly where I want and then the thin bit of wire at the end is just used to flick the end up and separate them if necessary. Like here, there's three bunched up together. Well, we can separate those and get a better, better appearance to the end of that little branch. So, yeah, I've made a start, that's the thing. Um, I'm one of those people that, I'm, I'm terrible at starting things, but once I start, I tend to get going a bit better. That's that motorbike next door. Is that not a gorgeous sound? Whoa! Uh, and that's it quiet at the moment. It's ticking over. Um, right, so then we will, again, we will look at bringing this branch to here, this one to here. This one will give us some depth. This one extends the outline of the, the tree across here. This one will probably have to come round to fill in that neg what will be negative space. So we'll end up with a pad, another one, and another one here on the right hand side, at which point the trunk heads off and will eventually get chopped and the new apex will come back over the top there. Yeah? So we'll get our next layer will come over the top of this one from this branch. We'll work on that. And then out the other side, we just need to we'll have to get an outline so we've got to get something to push out over there and the most obvious branch is this one and this one and join them together so merge them yeah and then get a decent pad out of it slightly over the trunk and out to the side yeah and that will enable us to see through and see a bit of trunk and then we've got a nice little branch here that we can use as a little pad Again, a little bit of um, some greenery across the trunk to me is essential. If you can see all of the trunk, trees don't look like that. They've always got at least one branch that crosses over the trunk. Anyway, I've made a start. We've reduced that apex dramatically. Um, that will allow the light to get through and enable this part of the tree to push on in the spring. And then we have to make decisions on there's an abrupt stop. <laughs> oh, there we go. Don't see why that needed starting again. Um, anyway, um, in the spring, we will get candles pushing up from the ends of all of this part of the tree. And at this point in time, this is not a finished tree. We're not into refinement, we're into development. So what we do to the candles in the spring must reflect the fact that we're developing the tree. We're not refining it, yeah? So uh, we might not be pinching. We might be allowing to grow and cut back later. That gives us our back budding. Feed and water well and all that cobblers. Anyway, I've made a start and um, I'm quite pleased with the way that apex has thinned out. Let that, a lot of light will get through as a consequence now. And then if I can get my pads laid out in a, in a rough way, they don't have to be exact yet. Um, if you think about it, in three years' time, most of these needles that we're looking at now will be gone. They'll be replaced by new shoots. So they don't have to be perfect, but nonetheless they have to form a structure to enable the rest of the branches to grow on. And if the structure's wrong at the start, then so will those new branches be wrong. So... Uh, there we go, some feeble attempts at wiring and um, some plans now made with a new apex decided on to continue the flow of the trunk and instead of it heading off like that, it'll head off and come back round and point towards us a bit more than it does now because it's still heading away. When I repot it, I will pull it forward a bit. So it'll come forward to that sort of angle. But this will be our new apex. This will be sacrificed in the future, undecided. I haven't got a clue when that piece will come off. Could be the end of next year, could be in three years time, I don't know. 
but there's no point in putting too much of the energy into that top and developing it when it's going to come off. Yeah, but the energy that that generates dispersed amongst the tree is important. So we'll go with that for now, as it's getting dark and I've got a job to see. See you next time, thanks for dropping by. Oh, if you're not subscribed and you're still here, <laughs> first of all, you get a bravery award. <laughs> and if you are still here, you can have five useless Roger points. You can't spend them anywhere, they're hopeless. <laughs> but, and you don't get a badge or anything, it's, you know, just silly little things. And um, yeah, if you're not subscribed, it would be nice if you did so. Um, and also the old thumbs up helps the channel. So uh, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.